morning, Cornerstone Church family and friends. God bless you. It's good to be with you on this Sunday morning on Memorial Day weekend where we all are taking time to remember the great sacrifice of men and women who have served this country and who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. So if you have someone in your family like that, please remember them, and not only them, but others of us in our nation who have served so sacrificially and given and paid the ultimate price. Let's not forget that that's why we celebrate Memorial Day. So we want to take time to reflect and remember them. Right now, we're going to open up with a word of prayer that we might get our worship services started. We pray that you are watching at home. Uh, will sanctify your hearts and clear your minds and be ready to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth as we prepare our hearts and minds to give you what God has given us. Let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for this opportunity to come out and to uh, worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. We pray now, Lord, that you will fill our hearts and our minds, Father God, that we might be open and receptive to your word today, that we might clear our hearts, that we might be able, Lord, to worship you in a manner that's pleasing to you. We pray for everyone that's present with us, those that are watching online. We ask you, Father, that they might clear their sanctuaries and turn their homes into a sanctuary, that we all might be able, Father God, to give you the glory and the honor you so rightly deserve. We pray now, oh God, that you would fill us with the precious Holy Spirit. We pray for our worship team, that they might come and give the song that you have given them on this week. We thank you for our deacons who are watching the door and for those of us, Lord, who are standing at the sacred desk. We ask you, Father God, to use us mightily in this day. So have your way in this place. Have your way in this worship, dear God. Fill us with the Holy Spirit that he might teach us your word, your will, and your way. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now you will hear from our worship team. Thank you. 
along with it. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy. I say he's worthy to be praised. Yes, he is.
God, we thank you for your worthiness. We thank you for the opportunity to praise you, and we thank you for the sufficiency of your grace. Lord, we glorify you on this morning. We we come to give you praise. We come to lift you up, realizing, oh God, that everything's not perfect in our lives. We have our stumbling blocks. We have our issues and our concerns. But we thank you, Lord, that we're able to cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. We still believe that, God. We still believe that you are the Almighty. We, we still believe you are the Alpha and the Omega. We still believe that you are the first and the last in spite of what the world may say. We still believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on an old rugged cross. And we Translations. The people were crowding around him and listening, get this, to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number ache. So they signaled to their partners in the boat, the other boat, to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all of his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. They pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. Simon answered, verse 5 says, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. From this area of scripture, I want to use this for a thought this morning, failing your way forward. Failing your way forward. Anybody in the sanctuary, things you, you fail to come to church this, oh well. F failing your way forward. What do you do when everything you know how to do, you've been trained to do, your skill does not work the way you intended? How do you respond when you fail at something at which you normally excel? Have you asked, ever asked yourself in circumstances such as this, why did I fail? Why did the team fail? Why did this not work out? Have you ever given your best empty? Your efforts not rewarded nor recognized. In fact, the reality is you came up short. In, in fact, if we're honest with ourselves, we simply have failed. Many wonder what happened to those children. You raise them the best that you can, but it seems like you failed. You've tried and tried and tried again to pass the test, but it seems like you simply continue to, to fail. Tried a business venture, but you failed, and now you're washing your proverbial nets. Thrown in the towel, and we have given up. Such was the case of this particular text scripture. When we see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the Sea of Galilee, verse chapter 5 says that he was standing by the lake and people were crowding around him. They were crowding around him because fame of him had now transcended his locality. He, wherever he went, people would come seeking to be healed, seeking to be delivered, seeking to be blessed by his presence. And so the crowd was gathering around him. And as they were gathering around him, the Bible declared that they were listening to the word of God. Isn't it good to know that some people still like listening and hearing the word of God? Everybody likes to hear the word of God say amen. Anybody still thankful 
that there is a word from the Lord. I know you need to be thankful because every other word we're hearing indicates that don't nobody care too much about the word from God. But let me tell you something about the word of God. It is the truth. And God's truth will always continue to march on. I don't care what we want to do or what we want to say. It will not dry up. It will not die out. It will continue on. Explain to me then why the Bible continues to be one of the best-selling books in all time. Even the naysayers have to admit that there's got to be some power in this word because the power of God's word will always cut down to the bone and to the marrow. You keep fooling with the word of God, you'll find yourself changed. You keep fooling with the word of of God, you'll find your mind rearranged. You keep fooling with the word of God, you'll find yourself with some power. You keep fooling with the word of God, you'll find yourself successful. You keep fooling with the word of God, you'll find yourself healed. You keep fooling with the word of God, you'll find yourself delivered and set free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. Anybody thankful that there's still a word? From the Lord. All of my step in your word. Ain't nothing wrong with the word. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with the word. Ain't nothing wrong with the word. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with the word. Ah, they were listening to the word of God. And the Bible says he saw at the edge two boats that were left there by fishermen who were washing the nets. He got in one of the boats that just happened to belong to Simon. You know him as Peter. And he asked Peter to go out a little from the shore. And then he sat down and he talked to people. And what the people, Jesus and Peter and them were dealing with when he told them to put out a little from the shore is that they had just came into shore after a night of failure and futility. Well, how do you know that, preacher? Because verse 5 says they had been, been fishing all night long and they had caught nothing. This was in response to Jesus' question, but for now, can I focus on the fact that they had worked hard all night long? Uh, that tells me that they had a night of failure and futility. Have you ever found yourself failing and futile? You know, futility means you're trying hard, but at your best, you can't get it done. That's futility. When you're, fu when you're futile, then you end up failing at what you're trying to do. Peter says, we worked all night long. That was a night of failure and futility. But I got news for Peter, and I got news for everybody in the sanctuary and those that are watching. I'm glad you failed. I'm glad we're coming up short. Because when you read this text, you got to understand that Peter and them were expert fishermen. They knew the time and they knew the place. They knew when the fish would be biting and fish would bite at nighttime when it's cool. And then the fish didn't come up to the surface out that they should have caught fish. They'd done this time and time. And time again on this very sea of Galilee, the lake of Gennesaret, they had done it time and time and time again. But this time they came up short. This time they came up empty. Got to add the relevant question. Why did they come up short? Why did they come up empty? Why did things not work up? Why did they fail? Well, they did not fail because the fish were not there. They did not fail because they didn't know what to do. They did not fail because it was the right time or the wrong time. They failed because God allowed them to fail. That's why I'm glad you failed. I'm glad I failed some courses. I'm glad I failed earlier that I learned how to get back up again. It was through failure that I learned that God can restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm had destroyed. It's through failure. Seek God. It's through failure that we often learn how to persevere. It's through failure. Because if we start out with everything being handed to us, we get spoiled. And we act and live as though there is no God. I'm afraid we got a lot of spoiled folk right now. Spoiled because the wind keeps blowing. Well, let me tell you something. If the wind can blow, that means there is a God. Let me know when you can find out his permanent direction.
Your God is real. And he's going to show Peter and them how real he is. These expert fishermen failed, and thus they had a night of failure and futility. But there's something subtle yet significant. Good. As Jesus then sees the boat, he then gets into Peter's boat, and before Jesus says, go out a little from the shore. Notice that Jesus is beginning now to work on their faith. The first thing he tells them is not to go too far. Don't go too far because you know God won't put no more on you than you can bear. He knows that they had a rough night. He knows that they had a night of failure and futility. Just came in and here comes Jesus saying, go out just a little ways. You know why? Because you can do that step. That, see, faith is a series of steps in life. That's why we walk by faith. If, if you can just learn to take that, we walk by faith. If, if you can just learn to take that first step, uh, you don't understand what the Lord is trying to do for you. You don't understand how much he's trying to open for you. There are too many people out there. You ain't took the first step yeah just go a little further than what you've gone pray a little longer than what you've already prayed trust it trust a little bit more than what you already have and watch the lord move you from faith to faith and glory to glory if you can just do a little bit more than what you're doing if you can go a bit more if you can serve just a little bit more if you can give just a little bit more god will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing if you can just do just a little bit, just a little bit more, please deliver me from people who claim to have faith and don't want to do nothing. I don't understand that concept of faith. That concept of faith is foreign to the scriptures. Maybe that's why folk don't like to hear the word of God because it's challenging. And it is the man that you and I must understand what it means to work out our soul's salvation with fear and trembling. I'm please deliver me from all of us weak need believers who are scared of the tide and trend of the word. I ain't scared of nobody. I ain't scared of none of them. Do whatever you want to do because God's word will steal. Stand strong and will steal. Stand in the end. It ain't died yet. And it will never die. Jesus says, go out, brothers and sisters, your faith will grow as you take steps. But to this, to this, to this, the Bible continues on. And when we get to verse 5, we see something else. We see then that that failure and that futility then leads to a morning of frustration and fatigue. Look at the text. You continue reading verse 4 to 5. When Jesus had finished speaking, he now tells Simon, go into the deep. And then let down your nest. Now, for Peter right now, this was a bridge too far. Now, he was able to go a little ways further. But see, God is not trying to get you a little ways from where you used to be. The Lord is trying to move you into purpose and into mission. The Lord is trying to move us into his divine purposes to be more specific and his divine mission. And in order to do so, he's saying you got to step a little further than you've stepped. You've got to do a little bit more than you used to do. You've got to go a little bit beyond what you're accustomed to going. Keep in mind, this is morning now. The sun is about to come up, and the heat of the day is about to come. Then he says, go a little further and cast your net in the deep. Wait a minute, Jesus. Wait a minute, Jesus. Wait a minute, Jesus. I'm the fisherman. We're the experts here. And I know you ain't nothing but a carpenter's boy, but... I appreciate the fact that you're attempting to lead us out and do what we know how to do. What I'm trying to say to you is I'm not mad at Peter for his hesitancy. I'm not mad at Peter for his consternation because all they know about Jesus is all they know about him right now. <laughs> all they know about Jesus is all they know about him right now. I'm looking at some folks and you, you can say the same thing. All you know about the Lord is all you know about him right now right now but i dare you to allow god to take you a little bit farther than where you've always gone i dare you to let god take you beyond the current faith you think you have and let god move you into a place of faith that you never believed you could get to is there anybody here that ain't afraid to say that you know god can i know sister jackson will testify out there on our 20 she know god can i know we've got some people who've been delivered from sicknesses illnesses and disease that ain't afraid to tell you that yes he can i know there's some people who've lost some loved ones uh, and can testify uh, that yeah there is a day after the bad day uh, I know God is able because
because I've lived it. I've walked it. I had to go a little bit further than what I thought I could. And when I got to the place, I discovered that God is omnipresent. He didn't lead me where I was. He's moving me where I need to be. Go a little bit further, Peter, and put down the net. He didn't only say go a little further and put down the net. He said put it down for a catch. Jesus, we ain't caught nothing all night. And now you're telling me to go a little bit further. This, in fact, was a very demanding request. Well, how do you know, preacher, that this was a demanding request? You got to understand that they were washing the nets. They had already gone out a little further. That means that they had to go back to shore get the nets that they had washed and packed up, reload the nets back on the ship, doing all of this while they had not slept all night. They had to do this while they were sitting up watching Jesus all night. And now here comes the breaking of the day when the, everything and everything of nature says the fish will not fish. And here comes Jesus saying, this is the very time you need to trust me and go a little bit further. I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, and I'm fatigued. You know what happens when you get fatigued, don't you? When you get fatigued, you get moody. Oh, when you get fatigued, see, fatigue is different than tired. When you get fatigued, that's almost like a sickness. When you get fatigued, you get moody. When you really get fatigued, have you ever been fatigued? When you get fatigued, your judgment is impaired. When you really get fatigued. That, that's why Satan came at Jesus when, in Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was tired and when Jesus was weary in his physical person, that's when the devil came at him even with, with more ferocity. Listen, you got to watch letting the people get you all tired and wore all out uh, to the point of fatigue. I, I wonder, though, maybe that's why Jesus told him that while he was fatigued so his own judgment would be off. <laughs> Because see, when we have our own judgment and we have our own credentials and we have our own ability, we tend to minimize our God consciousness. And we put, as opposed to the driver, see, oh, I know I got somebody out here. You remember the last time you were fatigued and before you know it, you said and did some stuff you never thought you would do or say since you've been on usher board number nine. They don't want to say nothing to me this morning. That's all right. That's okay. I'm going to preach God's word anyway. Listen, see, when, when, when you get tired and when you get fatigued, that's just when God said, I'm glad you're tired, I'm glad you're fatigued, and I'm glad you failed. Now you'll learn how to trust, lean, and depend on me. Because without me, you can do absolutely nothing. I'm glad, Peter. Nevertheless, there's one nugget here. Peter really ain't Peter yet. You notice in the early part, they called him Simon. And in the latter part, they called him Simon Peter. That simply means uh, is that Simon ain't Peter yet. See, Peter will be one that don't mind going out a little further. But Simon is the one that will say, Lord, I'm the fisherman. Yeah. And you know what? Simon Peter is not by himself. Because every now and then I discover that I'm Harvey and a little bit at the same time. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing. Y'all act like, oh, okay, everybody in here, holy. Okay. Uh, every now and then uh, I discover a little bit show up. I got to work on keeping a little bit at the house. Because, see, a see, little bit kind of... You know, a little, 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 little bit patience is a little short. But see, Harvey has matured into a pastor. But if y'all run into a little bit, the deacons would probably fire me. They say, that ain't the man that stands behind the sacred desk. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm thankful for my little bitness uh, that reminds me uh, of the Christ-likeness uh, that needs to shine forward. Uh, nevertheless, uh, at your word. Well, one last verse about the word. Psalm 119 and 105. I normally just quote it, but I want to make sure you know where this is. 
Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Why is that important? Because according to Peter's clock, the timing was not right. See, that's shouting with you. If those of us who know the laws of reciprocity. I'm glad you're sitting at home while I meddle. I'm meddling because I love you. I'm meddling because when we fail, it may not look like it, but we're simply failing our way forward into God's divine purposes. Because we love you. We've been serving all through it because we love you. Men have been sick because we love you. We love you. Get your church home and join that church home and get in there and serve. And if you got to stay home, turn your home into a sanctuary and worship God. You can do that. And if you do that, God knows you're just fine. But if you can't, if there are obstacles, you need to get yourself back into worship posture because we've got some stuff going on that we've got. And then we're going to pray. Pray ye one for another. Woke up this morning. 20 shot in Florida, two dead, jumped out of car, just spray bullets everywhere. Man doesn't have the answers. We got to do like Peter and have a nevertheless test. You need Jesus, you know how to reach out to us. And if you're here, you can come on down. If you need Christ, you need salvation, you can come. Want to unite with this local assembly? You re you reach out to us, or you can come down. However you want to do it, we're here. There are other churches that are open. We're here. We're here. We're here for you because we love you. I want to ask everyone present with me to please stand as we get ready to pray. Remember, this is Memorial Day. Soldiers, sailors, our men and women who have served so faithfully and dutifully. Hope. We're going to pray for those families. Price. That's what Memorial Day is for. Veterans Day is for all of us. Memorial Day is for those who died in defense of this country. And Cornerstone says thank you to family. Those of you who may have some in your families, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to pray that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father God, we want to thank you for your word today and showing us through Peter how to fail our way forward. Thank you for the challenge of your word. Thank you for the depth of your word. Thank you for showing us your word. Now, Lord, we pray for, for all of our people that are suffering and hurting, those that are in fear and those that are trembling, we thank you as we challenge one another in this very difficult season of existence. We pray for those, Father God, who are yet concerned about their health and we understand. We pray, Father, that you will give them a peace in their heart and a peace in their mind. And then we pray for those to be encouraged, those who are okay, that they would get to a place of worship because, Lord, without worship, we don't have a solid connection with you. And my heart is so concerned about those who I don't see. I pray then if they must stay home, Lord, home their hearts to turn their houses and home, that they might be still and worship you, O oh God, in spirit and in truth, because it can be done. Because we are not a people that are fixated on the building, but we are people, Lord, who desires to worship you. We pray for our country, O oh God, all of the violence before we can raise the flags back up from half staff. We got to let them back down. Oh, God, help our decision makers. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for their hearts and their minds. Lord, I pray that you will deliver them from lying. Lord, and then I ask, oh, God, in your wrath, Father, please remember mercy. Have mercy on us, oh, God. I plead the blood of the crucified Lamb of Christ on every situation, on every Congress. 
in the name of Jesus. God, thank you for your word and thank you for your ability to heal. We thank you, Father. We bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord praise while you're standing. Give him praise. We thank God for each and every one of you for being here today. We want to church and pray for all of our members as we keep trying to reach out. I want to make sure everybody's okay with something. Please don't hold that. Let know so we can try to help our people get this is a tough situation. It's difficult to balance it all. I'm concerned about people's mental health and the strain and the weight that we find ourselves under. And I'm not dismissed from that. Pray for me as well. Pray for Sister Miller. With that said, come next Sunday. Been led to with the, no more restrictions in God's house. Everybody know you're welcome. Just wear your mask. It's time to loose the bondage and loose the chains. We got to move on. We got to move on in the power of the Holy Spirit. We got to move on. We can no longer wait for everybody to be comfortable because I'm finding people going to do what they want to do anyway. So we're going to come to this house and we're going to give God praise and we're going to give him worship and we're going to magnify him and we're going to glorify him. Let everybody know they're welcome. Come on to church. Worry about no restrictions. Get your vaccine, whatever you need to do. Wear your mask, however you want to do it. We're going to trust God. That's what we're going to do. So let that word get out and official communication will come out. Don't forget, deacons are at the back. Drop your offering off and those of you that are online are here. You can always give online. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be safe. Be kind and remember all the soldiers that have died serving this country. All minds are clear. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his throne of glory with exceeding joy, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us all say amen, amen, and amen. You are dismissed. Follow the exit sign next Sunday. No Bible study this Wednesday. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.